Hello everyone, I just realized I'm covering up my recording information, let's not do that. Okay, here we go. Hello everyone, my name is Mordred Viking and I'd like to welcome you to this stream of Heart of Iron 4 Kaiserreich. This is the Kaiserreich Weekly Multiplayer Tournament and these are the Grand Finals. Last week we had the four preliminaries running uh, concurrently. Game 1, Game 2, Game 3, and Game 4. Each of those games consisting of four different factions, and each faction having five players. The winners of those preliminary games are now gathered here today, and that is the game that we're going to be watching. This is the big one. This is the cream of the crop. These are the best of the best. So, we should probably begin with introductions. Huzzah! And I will deal with notifications and stuff like that. I want to get all of this out of the way while we're still paused. So, the Dudes in Canoes. These are the victors from Game 4. They are this time playing as the Co-Prosperity Sphere. These are the guys that we saw playing last week. In Japan, we've got... Why? Man. In Russia, we have the French Baguette. In Fentiang, we have the Empress of France. In Siam, we have Mazdo. And unfortunately, their Indochina or Philippines player has not shown up, so they are currently on just four people. Then we've got the third international, which is the Outer Heaven. I don't know what game they won. I might be able to find out. Do, 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 do. Does it say anywhere? Mm, not that I can easily see. So, sorry. Um, so, Outer Heaven... The players in Outer Heaven are Demon in the Commune of France, Oulala in the Union of Britain, Pi in CNTFAI Spain, Opai in the uh, Socialist Republic of Italy, and then they have opted to take Ireland instead of Switzerland, and Ireland is being played by Fire Dradon. In the Reichspact, this is the Token Party led by the Maelstrom in Germany, Freddy in Austria, Chasm in the Ukraine, Purple Teaser in Bulgaria, and then they have opted for Sweden, which is uh, Reactionary Atlas. I misspelled his name. Hang on, let me just fix that. Then, finally, in the Entente, we have the Tomb Boys, uh, led by Vault Jumper in Canada. He snuck in at last second there. And Vault Jumper is the player that we saw in India last time. In the USA, we've got Necron Slave number one. In the Dominion of India, we have Necron Slave number three. In Nationalist France, we have nobody because they've not shown up. And then in Australasia, and they've opted for Australasia over Sardinia, we have Orgsec. So interesting so far that Sweden and Australasia are the same optional countries and they've picked those. But the third international has gone for Ireland this time instead of Switzerland. And I am curious about what difference that's going to make. The big difference, in my eyes at least, is the penchant for huge Irish industry. The Irish can really, really industrialize massively and can send absolutely enormous amounts of Lend-Lease. But that is, of course, going to be entirely reliant on keeping channels of trade open. So I am hoping to see a better quality of naval play in this game than we saw last time. Tournament brackets. The Toucan Party won game two as the Entente and are playing as the Reichs Pact. Outer Heaven won game one as the Entente and are playing third international. Necron's Tomb Boys won game three as Co-Prosperity and are the Entente now. So the only faction that didn't win a game, I guess, was um, Reichs Pact. And on that line, they have made a couple of changes to this uh, session. First of all, if we head over to the Maelstrom in Germany, they should have started with 200 army experience, which will allow them to get doctrines faster. And in fact, we're already unpaused, so we'll need to bear that in mind. Um, so they should be able to get doctrines faster. They also started with, I think it was 100 political power. Uh, Sweden is apparently modded to have an easier time forming Scandinavia. So we should see a unified Scandinavia. I think that was one of the um, rule changes that was passed. Let me just double check the rule change section and just make sure of this. If I still even have access to those channels. Hmm, I may not.
Yeah, so... Do not engage is allowed on spotting cruiser groups. Previously, uh, do not engage was not allowed at all. However, they can be um, up to max fleet size of one. Space Marines are not allowed. Um, however, Marine Space Marines are. So Special Forces Space Marines are. And Space Marines basically just means infantry units with tanks. So my favoured one heavy tank plus infantry, those are banned. Um, except if they are Marines or I guess Mountaineers, though that is not explicitly said. Uh, submarines are limited to 40 submarines per stack, which, okay. Uh, tanks are banned on ports, so you're not allowed to defend ports with tank divisions. That's mostly to stop the Space Marine Marines blocking ports. Um, Sweden is being buffed to allow them to form Scandinavia. And Germany will get two Land Doctrine boosts or 200 Army Experience. I guess they've gone for the two Land Doctrine boosts and 100 Political Power via the mod. So actually, if we head over to Germany, we check their research. Is this going to show anything off? At this point, maybe. No, I'm not going to show research. Sorry. Although, actually, this is before Germany has selected anything. So of the times that I can check research, this would be it. So land doctrine. There are no tech boosts here. Well, that's interesting. At least not that we can see. All right. So those are the teams as they have been set up. And I am just going to bring up chat again so I can actually see what you lovely people are saying, because up until this point, I've had everything closed. Dudes and Canoes won Game Forest Third International and their prosperity. Is the minute delay in place? Oh, shoot. No, it's not. Um, okay. Give me a second. I'm just going to close the stream and I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. I do need to implement the uh, one minute stream delay. Thank you for the reminder. I had meant to do that. So back in a second. Okay, and we are back again. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, we're in. <laughs> Just going to click through all of the events that France seems to be getting. Let's go and switch over to lovely Bhutan so that I don't get absolutely flooded by those notifications while I'm trying to set everything up on the stream again. Okay, we should be good. Kind of hard for France unless National France shows up, though. Yeah, um, it is. And that is why there's been a huge amount of emphasis placed on players actually showing up on time. Uh, there were quite a few complaints about how late the game started last time. I'm guessing that they'll be allowed to hot join. However, that is going to use a hot join ticket. Um, there is a fair amount of pressure being put on players to actually, you know, show up properly. Is a player who played Italy last time he streamed the tournament a part of this game? Yes. Last time, it was Union of Britain, France, Italy, Spain, and Switzerland. And this time, they're playing as the Curve Prosperity Sphere. I cannot remember offhand who was who. I just remember, and in fact, we can probably work this out by process of elimination. We had Y, man, in Union of Britain. Empress of France was Spain. French Baguette was France. Mazdo. Mazdo was either... Italy or Switzerland. I don't remember offhand. Who are the Entente players? The Entente players are Vault Jumper in the USA, Necron Slave number one in the USA, um, Nationalist France who hasn't shown, Orgsec in Australasia, and I've forgotten who their fourth player is. Dominion of India, slave number three. So, slave number three is already fighting in Afghanistan. So if we just switch back to the army map mode, we can see that that battle is going on. Let's see this from Afghanistan's perspective. So we do see that Indian forces are uh, in the area in quite large numbers. They're going straight for Kandahar. I wonder if they're going to go for a full annex. Probably. Uh, got a nice cut off there. Although they're about to reconnect. This unit could really do with um, blocking. Or this one. And I don't actually know the requirements for annexing Afghanistan. I've only ever seen the white piece happen. I think that's if the lines aren't pushed hard enough. Like if you're unable to capitulate Afghanistan, then you get the white piece event.
Mazdo was Italy, player of the match due to the versatile troops, that's it. Although it was pointed out to me that a couple of those naval invasions were actually Empress of France, so we do need to give some of the kudos to uh, Empress of France, who was playing as Spain. So, for example, the Dalmatian invasion, I think, was Italy, but the one in Africa was actually Spain. So even though it was reinforced, and I don't know why they did it this way, we had the Italian Marines reinforcing the SRI's land forces who actually did the naval invasion. So there was actually work between these two, um, but actually that was honestly the strongest point about the Copus, uh, about the third international in that game, uh, bearing in mind their Copus priority in this one, is they were very, very good at working together. Very, very, very good. Anyway, we have a civil war in China, and last time this civil war in China was a big one. So Anqing has already been defeated by Nanjing. Nanjing, at the moment, being supported by Len, uh, by volunteers from Germany, East Asia, Ukraine, Bulgaria, Germany, and Austria. Uh, KMT is being supported by Communist France, Spain, and Baratia. However, it is noteworthy that Union of Britain have not sent anyone, uh, Socialist Republic of Italy have not sent anyone, and Ireland have not sent anyone. So at the moment, Nanjing clique actually looks to be the one set to get a victory here. I mean, left KMT is difficult to take out because this region is so mountainous. But with so many volunteers coming in, uh, especially as they are managing to isolate and destroy a couple of the units, Nanjing is fighting this incredibly nicely. And we completely missed Anqing already. Um, who would Anqing have been supported by? Copro. I'm so used to uh, all of the tech issues from last time, I had a bit more time to kind of look around and work out exactly what was going on in terms of the volunteers and the wars and things like that. And this time it's just like, ah, things are actually moving at speed four. Crazy. So nice surround going on there. They've got a surround here. They have troops in all of the pertinent positions. Common of France is trying to break out, although there are two Nanjing troops there. They probably... I oh know that's a double province. Be better off going after these two. Uh, we do have some KMT units moving into the forest here with a level 2 fort being attacked by a very weak Ukrainian unit. Uh, they are slowly but surely clearing up that pocket. And then if Nanjing wins this, that's going to be a big deal. Also, it's just occurred to me that Copro doesn't have anyone in Indonesia or the Philippines. So there is a very good chance they're just going to lose their fifth player slot. Because the German East Asia is going to fight against Indochina. I don't know if the Reichs Pact is allowed to support East Asia. I don't think they are. But Indochina might still lose. Uh, or the Philippines. But the Philippines, I think, has to be done by an event to choose which direction they're going. And if the American Civil War starts before the Philippines joins, that could also be a big problem. Kind of wish there was a team in South America. Well, they were talking a lot about expanding this to being like six different factions because they're not overly uh, happy with the fact that Russia and China is in the same faction. Uh, they'd quite like to split the Copro up because of that. Like Russia should be its own faction. Uh, Copro should be the Far East and then possibly a South American like Brazil, Argentina or something like that. I don't know what that sixth faction would be. Uh, but they have been talking about splitting things up. Also, you could also have a Cairo Pact uh, faction which would definitely have rivalries against the Entente and against the uh, Reichs Pact. White peace happens if you take Quetta and Peshawar. You can pay political power and stability to avoid it, but the AI never does. If you take Kabul and Kandahar first, you get a regular Heart of Iron 4 piece and therefore do a full annex. Gotcha. So I would assume that they're trying to take Kabul and Kandahar. Kabul... Kandahar. And they have units here, but they're not trying to push it, although all of the AI's cavalry is currently moving away. Trying to re-establish with this section, and it looks like they're going to. India being a little bit slow on the uptake there. Far more impressed with how things have gone here in China. I mean, it looks like the KMT is starting to get themselves sorted. Uh, Nanjing could have got a cutoff here to uh, isolate that unit. Billy! But we see the... Ah, Ira Ireland has arrived. So KMT is now being supported by the entire team bar Union of Britain. There's no Union of Britain troops here. Uh, let's take a look around, see if anyone else is sending volunteers. So Germany isn't. They're just guaranteeing a whole bunch of people. 
Austria is to Nanjing. Wait, Germany? Oh, Germany is to Nanjing. I misread that. Um, gonna go a bit more generally around these countries. Press the wrong button. What I'm trying to do is click on you and then click on you. Um, they've sent units to Shanqing Chang'e. Oh, Shanqing has declared war. Okay, so it looks like Fentian is going to be supporting Shanqin Chang'e, and they are indeed. So we have got Siam, Japan, Fentian, and Russia here, bearing in mind that they are a player down, so they are not going to be able to do that. We do have a Nanjing cutoff here. Some of the cavalry has just been isolated and defeated. I'm not seeing... Oh, no, there's Germany. I was going to say I'm not seeing the volunteers here, but they are in fact there. Some of the other volunteers may well have gone north. There's Ukraine, there's Austria, there's Bulgaria. So it looks like they're um, redirecting quite a few troops to try and take out Anqing. And I would say in this instance, Anqing is more dangerous because Anqing can peacefully unite with Fentian. And that's basically just giving free territory to the co-prosperity sphere. While it would be dangerous if the Third International had an interest in this area, it is less likely that they would be like a significant part and you really want to try and slow down Fentiang from taking over the rest of China. So I, I'm hoping this time that we see more defensive um, volunteers being sent to Qing to stop, uh, stop Fentiang just rolling over them. Uh, that is something that did not happen last time and I think it cost the other players. Although ultimately Copro did not win. My money was on Copro for the entire game but they were eventually upset and upstaged by the Third International. Could have a Russian Ottoman faction. Yep, that's true. It's the second game I see people choosing Ukraine over ice pack countries. I wonder what Mordred thinks about to play for Ukraine next time he plays Kaiserreich. I've played as Ukraine before. I don't remember them being massively interesting. And also I've just played as Poland, which is right next door to Ukraine. I try to move around a bit more. I mean, the one nice thing about Ukraine is they do get oodles of manpower and actually a surprising industry. They're quite strong. They're probably the second strongest uh, faction in the Reich's Pact. Other sixth possible factions, Syndicalist Union, Baratia, and Syndicalist Iran could be pretty powerful, especially if the Iranians arrange for the Ottomans to beat Cairo, then next to the Middle East. Oh, sixth faction, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Although, hmm, yeah. I'm trying to think how you would stop their AI from just joining the Third International. If players turned up not to turn up. Uh, I'm going to just take a quick look to see if there is any update about the missing players. I don't think there is. But I'm glad that Canada has a player, at least. I was a bit concerned about that. This is the end of Afghanistan, so they are taking over Afghanistan. And no. No notification about the missing players. So it is just two, right? Let me just make sure I have this straight in my head. So the Entente is missing one in National France, and Copro is missing one in Indochina or the Philippines. So it is Entente and Copro who are down a player. So Reichspact and Third International are at full strength at the moment, and that's inherently just an advantage right there. So it does look like they're starting to try and push KMT, but KMT is doing a pretty good job. Uh, holding the lines. Like I said, these are mountains. This is very difficult terrain to take if you let KMT actually um, fortify themselves. Whereas up here in Shandong, it is still like hilly, but it's not mountainous and things are more open. But I am glad to see that we have three of the four factions all sending volunteers right now to try and protect this. And I assume the Entente is waiting for the Lingguang clique uh, civil war and then they will send troops to that. Because basically... Shanqing or Anqing can go Fentian, can go uh, Copro. Nanjing is um, Reichspact, and then Left Kuomintang is Third International, aligned. Not necessarily joining the factions, but they're certainly aligned in those directions. 
And boosting your own faction in China is definitely going to be a block against Copro. So all of the factions should be doing what they can to stop Copro expanding, in my opinion. We're missing two players, yes. We're missing the Minor Minor, which is on Indochina or the Philippines, uh, for the Co-Prosperity, and we are missing Nationalist France for the Entente. One day I need to do an actual Bhutan run. I mean, the problem with Kaiserreich is the really small countries just don't get anything interesting. Like, I did that Caribbean Federation game, and it was a snooze fest. It's one of the reasons I'm a little bit reluctant to do Legation Cities, although I know they have a ton of flavour. But I do remember Legation Cities before their rework was probably my least favourite run ever. It was terrible. province sitting right there which nobody has taken. That would allow them to get a second attack onto Nanping. In fact a third position. Fourth. One, two, three, four. And Ireland is moving out and Ireland could potentially cut off these southern units. Although I'm guessing that KMT doesn't want to expand themselves too much. They're basically just working to stop uh, Nanjing taking over everything. Although here we go, we have a cutoff. So these are Fendiang volunteers caught in Weijian. I mean, they are a big unit and they're obviously doing a lot of work uh, defending this position. Oh right, the other thing we should check is aircraft. Lots of people are sending aircraft. That's one aspect of volunteers that we missed out on uh, last time. It is actually a lot of the interventions which players are doing is so that they can start building up some air experience. So if we take a look over at Germany for a moment, we can see that they're starting to build air experience because they have sent air volunteers, likewise with the army experience. So sending volunteers is pretty valuable, not only because of the geopolitical strategies that you can employ and deny your opponents, but also uh, for the experience and the work you can do on building up your own templates. So it looks like Shanqing is doing a pretty good job holding firm, although this unit is possibly going to get pushed. Uh, Japanese units defending there, Siamese, Russian, Fentian. Are there any other Fentian units back here? No. And this is their one and only port. Although I wonder if these units are currently considered to be out of supply. I don't know. Let's have a look. Russia. If we click on you. Does not say you are. Third International should really be sending aircraft. They probably are. It's just much harder to check up on. Here we go. Spain, France, Britain. Even Britain sending uh, planes, even though Britain hasn't sent any ground volunteers at all. So are we going to see a very hands-off Union of Britain again this game? Because I do remember last game, it was incredibly hands-off. Also, that French unit is getting absolutely demolished attacking into those mountains. They should... At this point, KMT should probably not be attacking too much, or be attacking with more precision than this. Because they've taken a lot of casualties there. So have those Ukrainians. But again, this might be shifting templates. These units might be trying to, um, as they're gaining army experience, they're probably adjusting their templates, and that is going to lead to equipment shortages, uh, particularly for volunteers, especially if they can't be reinforced. Although, everyone, I think, has a port at the moment. Just going to check left KMT. Yes, Jianmen. They do indeed have a port. So, supplies and Lend-Lease can be arriving. And actually, speaking of Lend-Lease, is anyone doing Lend-Lease? Just volunteers to San Chanching, which is probably wise. Uh, KMT is just getting volunteers. And then Nanjing, and I think Nanjing probably should actually be sent guns, is also... Oh, no, they're getting a Lend-Lease from Germany Stasia. So, yeah. 
I do think it's a bit of a mistake for players not to be sending guns to these guys, because if you feed guns to the uh, Chinese miners, particularly Nanjing, which has a huge manpower pool, you can artificially inflate their army size. And that can be a problem. Like, it's another hurdle. It's another it's another hump in the, the path for other people's expansion. And uh, left Guomindang, gonna have a bit more of a manpower issue. I'm guessing Chenqing. Oh, uh, no, they have a million. In just this much territory, they have a million manpower. Wow. I don't know that they necessarily have the time to put out more troops, although if they manage to push through here and reconnect this, that could be pretty good. It looks like they're still dedicated to, like, defending a province each, though the Japanese units are currently trying to push out. Fentian could support that, and there they go. We do see the Nanjing and Bulgarian forces trying to push back, while the Japanese basically being hit on two directions. They will be taking the attacking from multiple directions, and also the multiple combat penalties. What actually sets off World War II in Kaiserreich World, yeah, there are two events. So the first one is um, Hort Savoy, so it's France demanding a peace of Switzerland, and Germany can basically decide to intervene and say, no, uh, we're going to protect Switzerland's sovereignty. Or uh, Alsace-Lorraine, France demands Alsace-Lorraine back. Sorry, I just got a message, let me just double check what they're saying. Yeah, so uh, they're asking if we can do a uh, stream favorite player again, like we did last time, which was uh, the Italy Mazdo. So this time we need to do the same. So I would like to do like an, a session one favorite, which is just going to be for the kudos, and then we're going to do a favorite for tomorrow as well, which is going to be for the game as a whole. So start thinking about who you like, who you think have done good things. I mean, still incredibly early, uh, but that is something to bear in mind. Okay, are there any other civil wars going on? Bearing in mind, I don't tend to get pop-ups for <laughs> wars breaking out. Doesn't look like it. Oh, and it looks like these Fentian units are finally starting to lose. And then once Bulgaria finishes that Fentian unit, they just need to keep on going. Do not let Fentian recover their organization. Oh, no, Bulgaria's decided to... Why? <laughs> I don't understand that move. No! You're letting them recover! Ah, oh, disaster! Yeah, I don't agree with that move at all. Who won last game? Uh, the team now playing as Co-Prosperity Sphere. They were the th third international in there, in that game. Are there penalties from attacking from multiple directions? I thought you gave an increased combat with bonus. No, there are bonuses for attacking from multiple directions, but if you're fighting in two different battles at the same time, there are penalties. So if, for example, you are being attacked and also attacking out, like here, uh, there should be a penalty for these guys. They're not attacking in two directions anymore. But yeah, if you're being hit from multiple angles, there is a, uh, a bonus and it increases by the more angles you have. So the first advantage is the increase in combat width, which is why it's fluctuating between 80 and 200, which is actually a very good example as the AI decides to attack or not. And then there's also the attacking from multiple directions bonus, which is going to be a further uh, damage buff. I thought, or is it a debuff? 